welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're discussing the heresies that have surfaced throughout the history of the Church, and today we'll talk about Jansenism. Cornelius Otto Jansen, also known as Jansenius, was born on October 28, 1585. He fell in with a group who followed the teachings of the theologian Michael Baeus during his time at the University of Louvain. The followers of Baeus had a devotion to the work of St. Augustine, and that led to a conflict with the Jesuits on theological grounds. Explaining why is going to take a minute. In the last episode, we talked about Protestantism, and one of the early Protestants that we didn't get the chance to discuss was John Calvin. More than anyone else, he advanced the claim that God predestines everything, including human choices, and tried to defend that claim even when others offered opposition to it. Well, the Jesuits were an order that had been at the forefront of the opposition to Calvinism. They were the ones claiming that divine predestination didn't work like that, and offering strong arguments in defense of true human free will, which Calvinism denied. Well, Jansen thought that some of the attacks against predestination, which had come from the Jesuits, went too far, and were in danger of becoming too similar to Pelagianism, the view that man doesn't need divine grace beyond his own free will and the teachings of Jesus and Moses to be saved. In short, Jansen thought the teachings of the Jesuits sometimes placed too much stress on the role of human free will and not enough on the role of divine grace in helping us to make right decisions. For that reason, he set about composing a large text in defense of St. Augustine's work called Augustinus. Augustinus was a book that placed enormous stress on the depravity of man, the need for divine grace whenever any good is done, and the claim that divine predestination is completely arbitrary. As you can see, this is a much more subtle theological confusion than thinking that Jesus isn't God or that icons should be smashed. It has to do with the Catholic understanding of predestination, the role of the authority of God, and so on. However, one thing in particular stands out about the Jansenist position as stated. Namely, when Jesus died, his action would only have been for those who he'd chosen to save, not for everyone. This would imply that there are some people who can't benefit from Jesus' death on the cross, even if they repent and believe, which would imply that some people are predestined to go to hell. And as the scriptures say, The Lord delayeth not in his promise, as some imagine, but dealeth patiently for your sake, not willing that any should perish, but that all should return to penance. 2 Peter 3, nine. Now, of course, just because anyone can benefit from Jesus' sacrifice doesn't mean that everyone is saved, but I'll get to that next season when I go over the topic of divine grace and the work of salvation and redemption. For now, it's sufficient to understand that Jansenism was condemned as a heresy because it at least implied that some are destined for hell. The position of the Catholic Church, therefore, is pretty strongly spelled out. The Church, following the Apostles, teaches that Christ died for all men, without exception. There is not, never has been, and never will be a single human being for whom Christ did not suffer. Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 605. The various errors of Jansenism were officially condemned by Pope Innocent X in 1653, so that's that for another heretic, right? Well, not necessarily. Oh, Jansenism is definitely a heresy, but as for Jansen himself being a heretic, there just isn't any evidence that he was. In fact, from what we can tell, Bishop Jansen wasn't guilty of any open heresies at all, but just made a few errors here or there. See, a heretic is a person who dissents publicly from the official doctrines of the church, and Jansen never did that. Even in writing the Augustinus, he genuinely believed that every one of his positions was in conformity to the teachings of the Catholic Church. Furthermore, there are two other pieces of information which further exonerate Jansen himself of responsibility for the later heresy of Jansenism. First, Bishop Jansen never actually released or published his book while he was alive. It was completed and published by some of his friends after he was dead. So, there's no use blaming him for releasing the Augustinus to begin with. He didn't. But secondly, we have every indication, including quotes from Bishop Jansen himself, that he would never have willingly opposed the teachings of the Church on this matter. At the very end of the text of the Augustinus, we find this passage written by Jansen himself. All whatsoever I have affirmed on these various and difficult points, not according to my own sentiment, 
but according to that of the holy doctor, I submit to the judgment and sentence of the apostolic see and the Roman church, my mother, to be henceforth adhered to, if she judges that it must be adhered to, to retract if she so wishes, to condemn and anathematize it, if she decrees that it should be condemned and anathematized. For since my tenderest childhood I have been reared in the beliefs of this church. I imbibe them with my mother's milk. I have grown up and grown old while remaining attached to them. Never to my knowledge have I swerved, therefore, a hair's breadth in thought, action, or word. And I am still firmly decided to keep this faith until my last breath, and to appear with it before the judgment seat of God. So, curiously, we have a heresy named after a man who was not in any way a heretic. Gosh, I hope that doesn't happen to me. We'll be jumping forward in time again for the next episode when we'll take a look at probably the biggest heresy of them all, which is still going on in, let's say, mm, modern times. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.